Defaulting on payments can have lasting effects on your financial health. And our trusted advisor and friend of the show, Chad Van Horn, is here to help us avoid the consequences that come with missing payments. Chad, the word default, when people hear that, it's like, ooh, no one wants to do that. But for our audience, what happens when you default on payments? Well, a default does not mean the same thing regarding what debt it is. So start off with credit card defaults. We're hearing a lot about that because of the pandemic, we have record high levels of debt. We have record level interest rates, inflation rates, everything going on. So people cannot pay their credit card. So what happens when you go late on your credit card? First, you're gonna have 30 days to make a payment before they start reporting on your credit report. Once that 30 day hits, your credit score is gonna drop anywhere from 20 to 100 points. It's wow. extremely punitive if you get to that 30 day point. So for a credit card, you wanna reach out to them to see if you can extend terms, miss a payment until you get back on your feet. So when we do default, because hey, it may be inevitable for some people watching, what can we do to get back on track? So just going through the different types of debt, credit card, again, you wanna communicate with the creditor directly to see if they have different programs where they maybe will reduce your payment or let you skip a couple payments. Vehicle, it's really important right now. If, if you go 30 days late on a vehicle, they're actually coming to get the vehicles because if you've been shopped in the market for a used car, they're at an all time high price. So they can repo, repo those vehicles and get paid in full. Mortgage company, uh, you, you'll actually get some more forgiveness from a mortgage company. You'll have more time. So with, with the mortgage company, you want to reach out to try to work out a loan modification or if they can put those payments on the back. So regardless of what it is, communication is always key and figure out what your options are. Obviously speaking to somebody like me, I can figure out your options and lay out the plan to get you out of the fall and back on your feet. It's this compounded thing, Chad, because finances seem to have this effect on our overall self-esteem as if we're successful or we're not successful. We have great credit, we have bad credit. We can manage these things. And a lot of people, I would imagine, live under a banner of avoidance when it comes to getting their finances on track because of the shame they feel, right? Like, you know, it's like, I messed up. How can I feel better about that? And you mentioned the drop in your credit score. What is the best way to increase your credit score? So you're going to say I'm crazy and it won't be the first time, but sometimes the best way to increase your credit score is to file bankruptcy. Because okay. the key to anything getting your credit score better is resolution of the debt. So many people just avoid it and, and I get it. It's, it's a stressful time. There's other stressors that we can concentrate on, but this, but having debt and having debt in default and dealing with those letters, phone calls, it has a health impact on you as well that can impact you long term. So the best thing you can do is resolve it. And if bankruptcy resolves it for you and gives you that fresh start, then that's the best thing for you, your health and your credit. Chad, what resources in addition to you um, that we can use daily to manage our credit, to monitor our credit, to uh, be more in the know? Because having conversations, I've, I've had conversations with friends who don't even know what their credit score is or even how to find out. So I'm a big advocate of the Experian app. So I have the Experian app on my phone. I monitor it regular, regularly. I have notifications set up. And for my friends and people that I've helped rebuild their credit and help them establish credit, just focusing on it and checking in on it will naturally help you increase your credit. If you completely ignore it, it's, it's gonna come back to bite you when you try to buy a house, when you try to buy a car. Um, even when you try to rent a car now, you need a credit card. So. Uh, just pay attention to it, set up some steps to and some goals to get your credit score up to where you want it to be. Obviously, 720 above is where you want to go. If you can get to 800, that's even better. That's the goal. That's the goal. And you are goals, Chad, our WSFL TV trusted advisor. Always a safe space when it comes to us financially right here. Chad Van Horn, you're the best man. Thank you. Hey, thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it.